Today we're rebuilding the 188-293 LSD out of the E30. I ordered a, a clutch pack. It's a whole kit from Speed Garage Works and he sent me new hardware, new O-rings for the flanges, I guess this locking nut, some seals, again for the output flanges, all of the dog ear replacements and clutch packs. So this is an upgraded kit with more lock and you use a third clutch pack and just take out a spacer in there. But overall it's pretty simple. Some basic directions, some basic torque specs. We're just gonna pop this thing apart, tear into it, replace it, drain the fluid, fill it back up and we're good to go. Lastly, I'll be running a dual ear cover from an E36. It's the same bolt pattern and everything. You just gotta modify how it bolts to the chassis, and then you need to use a Z3 pickup like this to actually pick up the speed wheel on the inside. But that's pretty much it. I got this from SCP Euro and everything else, like I said, from Speed Garage Works. All that'll be in the description. So just follow along. The conical spacers provide tension to the top plate. Okay. <sighs> you're hitting the other nut. There, there it is. I mean, you're not proud of it. Yeah, this is not getting loose. <laughs> Keep doing that side. Yeah. Hey, all right. Set. This is the important part. Oh yeah, it's all up in there. Yeah. All right. So grab the box and we'll lay it out. Assembly, everything is laid out flat in order that we removed it. I've got the new clutch packs, and all we're going to do is reverse order and put in a new clutch where it needs a new clutch and a new dog ear where it needs a new dog ear. Mike measured out the existing dog ears and clutches, and they really didn't have much wear, so this thing had a whole lot of life, but we're still going to do the upgrade of the three clutch. Brings the uh, locking percentage from the factory 25% up to around a 40% lock. Right, exactly. That's something I didn't touch on. But half the reason you do any of this upgrading is to increase the lockup. So increase the or decrease the amount of slip between each side. So like Mike said, it goes from 20 to 40. And then if you were to do a four puck, in which you would have to machine down this face, you would go up to 60. I think it's that one, right? It's actually the case cover. Oh. 
So Where is it? It's the LSD cover. It's the this guy? Yes. So you'd actually have to machine this, the thickness of a, a clutch and a dog gear, and then you could put four and you would have 60% lockout. But that's a, that's drifter and full race car territory, so this is good for, for us. But basically, in order to do this upgrade, we're just gonna take out this washer, throw it away, and that'll be the same size as the dog gear clutch. All right, so you're going to start with, you have a small spacer already in the bottom that didn't come out when you pulled it out. So the next thing that goes What in, small spacer? There's a small spacer in the bottom of that stack. They're normally stuck in the bottom and there's, it is in the bottom there. Oh, there's these things right here. Right, so there's normally three. So your third is in the bottom. You can just yeah. move it, it's an oiling ring. Yeah. So the next you're gonna do is the Bellevue washer. So the this Bellevue guy. washer is gonna go small diameter down. So the large radius is up. And you're supposed to oil these parts when you re reassemble them. So just dipping it in the old oil and we'll run fresh oil through it. That'll be good. Then this guy? Yep, that diamond side up. Diamond side up? Yep. Okay, yeah, that, that looks good. Okay. This time is the Bellevue washer. The large diameter Bellevue washer. This it's guy. got small spring radius down. This guy goes cone down. All right. Okay, and then you'll put in one of the new dog gears. That's non-directional, it can go in any way. Dog gear goes in any way, any direction, you name it. Oh God. Yeah, Got it. All right, now you need a clutch disc. Those are also non-directional. Here's our new clutch disc. Like Mike said, non-directional. Okay, now you're gonna do another plate and another clutch. Like this. Next, you're going to do the spider gear assembly, exactly how it came out, so flat side down. So, because you've got the extra thickness of the clutch and the dog gear in the bottom, it may be a little bit of a pain to line up those splines on the, uh, on the assembly there, but be patient. Go, go. Okay. Aha! <laughs> you got it, huh? Yeah, as soon as I looked at it. You felt that, huh? Alright. So, little spiders go in like that. I'll trust you on it. Alright, so this gear. Okay, ramp. Alright, put some oil in there. So the ramp angles are where people talk about two-way and one-and-a-half-way. Yeah. So and that, that wiggles down in there. Yes, sir. There we go. All right. Now, on top of the spider assembly, Clutch you got bottom. one disc. So put a disc first, then a plate. Clutch. Clutch goes in. Wiggling onto that. Yeah. This is the one you got to be careful with because you can crack those. There it is. All right. Those are my phone. Dog here. Yes, sir. Now you can do the large Bellevue spring with the large radius down. Large radius down? Yes, conical up. Okay. Like you're saying, I've just been like kind of looking at you and then doing it. <laughs> yes, down and side so down. Put that in the, in the... Now, here's the thing though, it does need to line up with the, the recess tab on the case cover. Right. Which was what you had in your hand. Okay, so I've got the okay, large. Okay, now that last small Bellevue that has the spring radius up towards, the small radius up towards the carrier and the large towards the spider gears. So large down, conical up. All right, and now the fun part, it's gate cover. So there is one more spacer just for, for people watching. It's definitely stuck inside there. Yeah, I see. And there's one also in the bottom of the carrier that was stuck there. As well. If those come out. If they do come out, there are three, and that's what people refer to as the third small spacer. We're going to put blue Loctite on these. Yep. This hardware came with the kit. And then we tighten them in a star pattern.
Okay. A little bit too much curve off in there. Give it some fluid resistance in the bottom. Foot pound. 30, you say? 30 pounds. New seals from Victor Rings. I guess that was pointless. Goes in there. Seated in there. Feeling confident, feeling sexy, feeling. Good. Oh shit, my fingers are too fat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, take some weight off the middle so I have my fingers cut off. There we go. We do like two or three power grunts, three ugga uggas. another day and the diff is looking good. Paints paints all right. I mean, definitely missed some spots because of the way we were painting it, but everything is good to go. Spins freely, case covers on, and we're ready to go. I have these, uh, these spacers for the differential because of the offset subframe bushings, and I've got some studs, longer studs, to go with the spacers from Garagistic. But I think I'm only gonna put them on these two because if you put them up here, they're quite difficult to get a nut on, on top of. Maybe I'll change my mind later, but for now I'm just gonna put these two in and then use some extended suds. Put a little blue Loctite on there. Alrighty. this down and get this thing loaded in.
here's the final product. I still have my Solorx coilovers. That is the double ear mount that I devised. Mike helped me out a lot on this. But basically it's just a two inch stainless box section. Come down, cut those boxes in half, drill holes through it, and then that's what mounts the diff to the actual chassis. Now, you're not, you guys aren't gonna see this because I find it way too much of a pain in the ass to film under the car for anything extensive like this, and the video just never turns out any good, and I don't wanna release it, honestly. So, this is your introduction to it. It was, it was a lot of work. It's welded straight to the frame there, and then the whole thing's been re-undercoated. Except for this part, because I still have to do sway bar mounts. But the star of the show, the 293 LSD, three, three clutch rebuild. Looks great in there with the epoxy white on the white subframe. Garagistic bushings. Anyway, we are getting very close. I need to throw some axles in here and then throw the drive shaft on and we'll be We'll be good to go. I gotta get some fueling done and we'll start this thing up. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Shout out to Speed Garage Works for all the help you gave me with measuring some things and guiding me through the rebuild process. Check them out, links in the description. Till next time.